Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're going to talk about how not to blow up your speakers. Uh, the idea is, is that we've got ourselves a new set of speakers. Maybe we uh, bought a set of speakers, something went wrong, we lost our tweeter, amp, or woofer uh, while using it, and we're trying to figure out was it the speaker, was it me, was it the equipment, what happened? Uh, normally, this happens because we get way beyond Unity. And a lot of times, if you're, if you're playing in a band, the main speakers are facing away from you. If you're a DJ, again, the main speakers are facing away from you. Um, if your speakers aren't matched, meaning the same uh, type of speaker on both sides, you can have one speaker that is a little bit better of a performer than the other one, and you can't hear the other speaker. This happens. If you have two matching sets and you're still having an issue, uh, this can also lie into a couple of effects that come down to equipment, but setting up on the back of the speaker and what's going on. Um, occasionally, we try and do a show with speakers that aren't big enough. So if you buy speakers and you feel comfortable with those speakers for 100, 150, or maybe you bought something bigger and you're good for up to 250, if you're gonna do a larger crowd, than you normally are with the speakers you have, you might want to rent another pair of speakers not to damage the ones you use 90% of the time. Uh, that being said, let's say you've blown the amp, let's say you've, you know, one of the things went wrong and you're going, I didn't have that volume cranked up so bad, but still it went up. You know, I had it on for two hours and at the end of the show, somebody, you know, said there was, it didn't sound right and you check and then all of a sudden, boom, you realize your tweeter's gone or your woofer's gone or you lost one of your speakers. Well, if you lose a tweeter or a woofer, it's usually due to setup. And this is, I'm not picking on anybody for good or bad setups. It's just one of these things that can happen. Now, maybe we're missing something in our understanding on how to set up a speaker. So that's what we're gonna cover here is how to set up that speaker and how to use the features that are on our equipment like mixers and controllers to help us maximize the volume without blowing it up. And then we'll add a couple of things onto it as well. Uh, I don't have them here, so we'll just have them pop up on the screen. These things are uh, processors. So you can get, uh, there's a limiter, which also is built into a speaker. There's uh, compressors and there's gates. Uh, in the old days and still currently in really big, if you go look at a, uh, stadium size setup with a you know massive line array setup or if you look at you know anything where it's on a big grand scale these guys have racks and these racks have these type of equipment in it and we'll talk about what that is and how you can get one for a reasonably affordable price and can help you out with uh larger setups or louder setups which are you know the big thing so here we go if we're talking about speakers now i did put up here um a ZLX and a, and a TS3 series. And this, there's no brand picking. I'm not picking on these brands. I took this because one, uh, this has a display on it. This one does not. This one uh, shows us in big writing limit, hitting our limit. This one has a light. Now we think, okay, those lights are fine. They kind of tell us where we fit the roof because, well, it's telling me we fit the limit. Now, what it's really doing is, this, yes, it's indicating something to you. Uh, but you really need to understand what, you know, what a, a limiter is in the speakers. It's a point, if we were looking at an EQ and we had a chart in front of us, so we had the whole, all the LEDs blinking, flashing up and down, uh, shows us where uh, our highs and everything's punching way above Unity. Unity is what we see on a mixer. Uh, it's that magic spot as the dBs count down to, I'm cranking up the volume, getting it louder and louder and louder. I get to that U or zero, that's basically, we've maxed out the actual gain on this. And normally we're trying to float within that, you know, uh, minus two plus three off of our uh, display meter. Now, if we're not, if we get to unity and we're jumping way above, we're in the yellows and reds all the time, we need to turn down our actual mixer on this side. We have to look at which actual lines are causing us all those issues and balance that out a little bit. We don't want to be over the top. Now understand that that doesn't necessarily proportionally affect things like bass and treble. Saying that, it does if we add bass and treble to our board. Now remember, all these knobs, 
that have reference to uh, gain levels all have a unity, a point where it's either at zero or at U, which is usually at 12 o'clock. And if we start adding to that, either on the highs or on the lows, uh, we're going to have to compensate somewhere. Uh, so that means that if I add 5 dB, let's say here, or 6 dB here, uh, I'm going to add it to my actual main meter, which is going to mean that's what's coming out and going to the speaker. So what I want to do is I want to say, well, if I'm going to add that, I'm going to come here instead of being at unity. If I've added six here on top, that's my high adjustment. I'm going to come here and go from unity and probably back up to minus five. So if I went plus five here, go minus five here, and that'll pretty much keep us where we want to be here. Now, you, there might be some fine tuning to still be done, but that kind of gives you a math idea of what's going on. Now, this is a guide, not a rule, so don't go, oh, that's not how it works, but it's a guide. Same thing. If we're looking at our actual uh, dial setups here, mids, highs, lows, we also have an EQ here. Well, why do we have it here and here? This is to adjust the person or what equipment we have plugged in here. This is to adjust the room, compensate. Now, remember, same thing applies here. If I'm at zero, I'm at unity. If I go plus, I'm now plus 5 dB on top. So again, I'm affecting what's going to happen on the meter. So you want to see that. If I am going to put in a traditional V pattern because I want a little bit sharper highs and I want a little more defined base, I'm not just going to crank it all up. I'll probably drop it down a little bit on the mids and then bring up the highs and lows just a little bit. Uh, this way I'm affecting the overall unity level, the overall volume output level is affected to a minimal amount. That's a good thing. So same thing happens when you're on a controller. On a controller, you're going to have usually the same setups. Now, these can be small controllers or big controllers. They can be any type that you have. There's going to be some sort of master volume output. There's going to be uh, level outputs for each one. And if you notice somewhere, it will mention here's, you know, here's the unity. If not, then it's usually split down the middle. Uh, you're adding 20 dB, that sort of thing. But there'll also be meters, and the meters are what you're going to want to keep an eye on. If you look at any really good um, artists out there DJing a lot of work, um, you'll notice that they're constantly adjusting their levels uh, to get the actual over output, sorry, the overall output in sound to be consistent. They're looking at their meters. They're keeping an eye on how that room sounds through the meters. That's going to be your job too. So, again, when we get back to the speaker, we've kind of figured out where we want to be getting the most sound out of our equipment to the speaker. Now, how do we set up the speaker? Well, you want to set up the speaker in practice. And then you want to come back to it and say, I understand that. And you can adjust it then, therefore, going forward on any show. Um, you want to find where the speaker has its preamp, if it's separated to its main volume control, and then you want to adjust them accordingly. The idea is, is that I want to get my volume, to if I'm going to go full tilt here, uh, up to unity, and then I want to bring my preamp to unity, and that's going to give me my overall. If that volume is too high, I'm here on my mixer or controller at where I like to be for my main volume out. Top end. If that's too much, then back it up here. Now, the same thing applies. If we want to add volume and we're not, we're finding that our music is very soft, then we can start increasing the preamp control, bringing it above. Now, we're only looking for that to sit at a comfortable level. We don't, this one here is really good. It's got a full display on it, shows you when you're approaching the maximum output of the speaker. Keep an eye on that. That's what really counts. Now, once you get that maximum setup, if you're doing something, we'll make it easy, a wedding, because that's an easy cutoff point. You've got your before 9 o'clock sound volume, and you've got your after. That doesn't mean I'm going to, either through my controller, through my mixer, just run it lower. You should feel comfortable having this set the same all the time. What you really want to be able to do is just increase the overall volume going to the speaker. So that would be the amplifier itself. So in this case, that would be this volume here. I would turn this down 
before nine o'clock, let's say, and then the party really kicks off at nine, I'm going to make adjustments here and bring it now back up to straight up onto the Unity, which is basically giving the amplifier all the power it has to drive the speaker. That's going to do a really good job of getting the output. Now remember, it all comes down to the meters and setting up the speaker. Uh, you need to do a lot of rehearsing with that, so maybe you need to buy yourself some earmuffs to practice at home. But that's what's going on there. That's how you maximize the longevity of the speaker without burning it out. Now, amps will burn out two ways. You can burn an amp by just wailing on it, uh, you know, giving it way too much power, distorting it, and it's like squealing your tires. If you're doing that, you're going to blow your tires in your car, and nobody can help you with that. But then other people go and say, well, you know, I had the volume only at, you know, 50% or 30%, and my amp gets really, really hot. And that's because you're probably turning up the preamp that's like supercharging it, but actually not going fast. That's just like having nitrous oxide constantly pouring in your car. It's just going to burn out the engine really, really fast. If I just turn up the preamp and not turn up the actual main volume power for the amplifier, what's going to happen there is basically I'm taking a 1,000 watt speaker and I'm running it as if it was only 500 watts. So I'm compensating with a lot of preamp. So I'm just adding a lot of preamp juice to, to really try and get that out there. That's just going to overheat the system and eventually burn it out. So it's better to make sure you start off here at zero unity right down the middle and bring up the master volume to match that full volume level that you're looking for. So that's best practice on that part there. Now, if you're running a speaker like this, which only has one knob and everything's controlled through one knob, same principle really happens. Uh, the preamp level and the volume is connected into one source. You want to make sure that you're feeding it a constant signal and then just compensate with your overall volume knob. So before nine o'clock, I'd have it here at 50%, which is up at 12 o'clock. And then later on in the evening, I would come back and turn that up and that would allow me to adjust it. Uh, that's what makes some speakers today very popular. Let's say like the Mackie Thump Boost. The boosted part is the Bluetooth interface, the iPad and all that kind of stuff. The allows you to control these functions from your actual phone or tablet, so you don't have to go back to the speakers and to do that. Uh, you know, other companies like Electro Voice does have that on their next models up sort of thing. Uh, JBL has it. That's one of the reasons why they spend a little bit more money because you get that interaction uh, between your actual tablet phone that you might have with your system and the speaker wirelessly. But we've got those videos. So if you want to look at those, we'll put links for those down below. But here, it's all about controlling the volume. Now, this is the part where you can say, well, what can I do to make sure, because I can't hear the speakers enough or they're very far away, I can't tell if they're distorting or not. Uh, in big setups, uh, you'll see a lot of sound engineers using on a rack, they'll have a, uh, sorry, a compressor. Now, we normally think compressors on the microphone side of things, which is true, um, but you can also put it on after everything's done. So on the back of the mixer or the back of the controller, you go XLR out of here and instead of going to your speakers first, you go to the actual compressor. Now the compressor could be a combination of things. It could also have same rack but extra features on it. You can have compression, you can have a limiter, and you can have a gate. Now those are three different things that do three different tasks. Um, they're all different from each other. So, you know, you might want to get familiar with what those are. We're going to order some models from DBX. So this way we can show it off and show what it actually physically does. Uh, but for now, we'll just talk about it. Now, if we take from here, we go to the speakers and we put a, an actual compressor in between, it basically means we're going to take the, the highest of the highs when it comes to frequency wise, and we're going to line them up with what's going on with the majority of the music being played. Same thing with the lows, the softest sounds. We'll bring those up a bit and we'll take the top and we'll bring that down a bit. Um, you can do that through using an actual mixer that has it, um, though you don't have as much control over how, how aggressive it is or how not aggressive it is. So, but you can do that running through a mixer. We'll do a demonstration of that at the end of this video with this actual Behringer and show you how that can be used. Because if you're mobile and you want to have something smaller, this might be a way to do it. So that's what a compressor does. Now, how that's going to help you with your volume is 
it's going to take away that if you end up with, let's say, a plus 10 dB on your actual mixing board on your controller, uh, it can knock it down in half or by a quarter or, you know, by an eighth, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's just affecting that one particular frequency at that one particular moment, just bringing it down. So this way it lines up and you're not going to have this sharp sound that's going to eventually just burn through your tweeter or damage your woofer. That's what a compressor is going to do on the output. Now that's really good if you're doing large shows because it's even harder to hear what you're doing in a large show or a very loud show. So strongly recommend that. Now, again, we'll put some models down below. That's, you know, a compressor, now a limiter. It's what built in, but if you have it separate, you can control what that is. Now a limiter is just a hard rip it off the top sort of thing. It's just going to, you know, if it's too loud, just cut it off. That's all. Well, I don't even want it. That's a limiter. That's a little harsh, but that is your last defense sort of product. Then you have a gate. A gate is for when the volume is very soft. Uh, let's say you're just talking on the microphone if you're a DJ. You're playing music and the music has some very quiet periods on certain microphone inputs or certain instrument inputs. Uh, a gate looks at the, each frequency and if the frequency is at a certain level, puddling down at the bottom, It'll look at it and you can set that level and it'll also cut that off and get rid of it. Nothing's happening there. That's just basically background noise from preamps, mixers, all that happening. And it's just basically saying, well, that's just messing around with the sound. We'll just chop it off and get rid of it. And that's okay. Uh, remember, that's, 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 not, uh, that's not affecting, don't mix that up with, oh, well, I don't want to cut my bass off because that's lows. No, no, no. We're talking about how much in each particular frequency we're talking about. We're talking about uh, idle sounds in frequency ranges. It's there, if it's not being used, it just gets rid of it. So it's not gonna affect your bass, it's not gonna affect your highs, it's just gonna affect these frequencies that have very low sound to it. That's another way to control the sound coming out of your mixer or controller going into your speaker. Uh, it just makes a better show, makes a better performance, uh, and gives you some control and it makes you look very professional when you're using it. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna set this table up again. So this way, it's gonna be hooked up to the actual mixer that I use on the camera. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of what a compressor does. So this way you have an idea. Okay, so we've got the Behringer Q1202 USB mixer. Now this is important, not because of the USB and all the other features that it has, but specifically for the compressors, that's why we have it here. Everything else is off table. The compressor is what we're going to talk about. For me to do that, I am going to have to put on my headphones. And what we're going to do is play a little audio, which I'm going to do by having it connected to two actual inputs so we can have a comparison. They're exactly gained up exactly the same. They're cued right in. All I'm going to do is go between this unit here, which is, so for bench reference, is just a straight line in, no compression. So I'll hit play here. So don't be surprised, this is coming through the camera. One mixer into this mixer, this mixer into my actual uh, mixer that runs at the camera. So here we go, see how this goes. So there we go. So what we're listening to right now on the mixer is channel five and six. No compressor. This is the actual audio soundtrack. This is the way it sounds, no modification. Now. I'm going to turn up, balance exactly the same, channel one. Now here, I've added the compression to it. I'm gonna back off on the compression. Now we're going to back off on it. We're going to add the compression back on. Now it's a very subtle difference and it doesn't affect necessarily just the highs or just the lows or anything. Uh, what it's looking for is individual sounds that go beyond a certain threshold. This is in this case unity on the actual system. And that's where it's basically saying, well, if it's plus four over dB from unity, uh, when we have it at the minimum amount, it's only going to cut it in half. 
So a one to two ratio. Uh, if we have it at a high rate of compression here, this compressing that, so if it's eight over, it brings down the one. If it's four over, it brings down to 0.5 over. So it's really giving it a, giving it a, a slam on it. Uh, so that's what compression does. Now this is, how does this save your speakers? Cause that's ultimately what we're talking about. Uh, there's machines from DBX, which we're gonna bring in and spe talk specifically about what those units do. And they fall as really good processors after the fact. So after we've put it through our controller or our mixer and all of that, and we're gonna go to our live speakers, we can dial that in. So what this is doing is a compressor normally looks at the softest sounds to help bring them up a bit. Things that are way below Unity, bring them up a bit. And th things that are on top, and bring them down a little bit. So this way it's all there. It's just kind of, you know, letting the air out of the balloon a little bit. So we'll do it one more time. So now you can listen to the very, very high notes that have gone beyond. And you'll notice that they're brought back into check. So first we'll do it without. And then we'll do it with. dial it in just a subtle difference smoothens it out a little bit so that just gives us a smoother sound without all these pops of, of, of over unity sound Back it out to hear what we actually had. Now we'll bring it in. So it may feel like it's affecting the overall volume, but what we're really doing is just bringing in the check. So yes, we're not jumping over 3 dB. Uh, it's keeping it pretty close to unity in that sense. Uh, when we dial it in, dial it out. Uh, but to be honest, that's what we're shooting for. Uh, we're shooting for our music to stay within a plus three, minus three dB rating. Uh, of course, you're going to have periods where you do have a quieter and you do have it louder, but you have to keep that in check and you have to know where your music's going. So anyways, I just thought maybe that's what you'd wanted to hear and how you wanted to hear it. Uh, it gives you an idea of why it's there. Now, of course, we're going to do this all over again once again once we actually get the, uh, the units in from DBX. Uh, and those are processors. We will put uh, some model links down below. We'll actually put a whole package together on Amazon. Uh, so this way you can have one click, see all the different actual units uh, that you can look at. But if you're trying to save your speakers, uh, if you're trying to prevent it from blowing up or blowing up again, that's the kind of stuff you want to look at. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. So if you uh, like to subscribe, hey, at any point in time, poof, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.